guys! Welcome back to Let's Play Xenogears! Last time we arrived... Okay, I guess I'm jumping, even though I didn't press the triangle button. Anyway, we arrived here, wherever this is. That time I meant to jump. And we're going to proceed forward at long... Last? What do you want, Hammer? Why would we stop now? We're almost out of here. Hammer? Hammer has a gun. Return where? Where did this come from, Hammer? Um. Now, this is one of the strangest plot lines in the entire game, and that's saying something. This is not strange because it's complicated, more so it's strange because it's not very well explained. Now, if you remember way back when we were about to, when we just reunited our party, we had Ellie for the first time, or, well, the second time, and Rico as a permanent party member, and we are just about to leave Nortun. There was a scene in one of the houses where Hammer wanted to speak with Ellie and do that privately, and we never hear anything about that scene, and then shortly after that, Hammer is on the Goliath and disappears, and we never kind of see Hammer much after that. Well, apparently sometime after that, he meets Krellian. Though, it's never explained what he wants to talk to her at that point. So, it's possible that he met Krellian and had this plan all along. But, it's never really made clear one way or the other. So, it really does come out of left field. There's very few, you know, points in the game you can look at where it would make sense. Where, oh, this is where Hammer decided he was going to do this. He won't change it. What are you talking about? Actually, that part of it does make a little bit of sense, I think. Unless they explain it a different way. Hammer, you're a bastard, you know that? Maybe that line there is why he wanted to talk to her in private. Maybe he was asking her out. I really don't know. If anyone uh, has any ideas, comments. Why are you no good? Well, you definitely don't have either of that, but you have ingenuity, and you, you know, you've been able to bring parts with you somehow without, uh, you know, big gear parts, and they don't seem to take up all that much room in your bag. Pretty much like he is. But it's not like we hate you. Not special, huh? Well, you have plenty of choices. You could choose not to do this and stick with us. Well, that's not the person I expected to approach the situation. Yeah. But moving forward is probably going to trigger him to do something nobody wants. Yeah. Okay. Now, I, I kind of mentioned this previously when it came to Eric's character development, how it kind of happened really fast. They left a little space in there for Medias, or however you pronounce her name's character development. We got a bit before, and then we saw a little bit in the flashback with Ellie, and now we're getting the... Um, kind of the, the third part of her character development at this point. And it does tie up some of the uh, concerns Ellie had from earlier on. Whether this is talking, she's talking about being a normal biological mother. She's just a normal mother. She cares for her child, whether it's biologically her child or not. And Somehow, he's not very good at holding hostages, I guess. Interesting that she goes straight back to Faye. 
I would have liked a, a little movement on Faye's part to initiate, you know, a hug or something like that, but oh well. Wait, what? Hammer! You get nothing out of that! What the hell? And he's not doing it out of anger or out of, you know, a desire to inflict pain. He hates the fact that he's done that. I don't really know why he's done that. But that's it. He just killed her for no real reason. Oh, we haven't seen either of you in a while. Now, we've only seen the one character once, and of course, Graf, we've seen a whole bunch. The other one is the Executioner. Uh, she was the female armored knight who brought um, some information to uh, the, oh, what's his name? The Kaiser of uh, Kislev there. And asked for... Uh, for Faye to be brought to D-Block, including Weltall. Now, Ellie can actually participate in this fight, and it's a fight against Graf. Now, unlike the previous fight, uh, Ellie will actually be targeted this time around, so she's not, you know... Actually, it actually makes the fight more difficult if she would have been, because it would have focused all of their combined damage on two characters instead of three, and if you lose both those two characters, it's over. But, uh, it really isn't all that important. Now, so Executioner and Graf. For some reason, as a Disc 1 finale, this really isn't a difficult boss fight. Um, I kind of mentioned it before in the last episode there. Oops. Well, I guess we'll go that route. <laughs> but, um, you can... That volume's a little bit loud. Let's turn that down slightly. For me, anyway. Me turning it down does not affect how you guys will view it. Uh, let's see here. We'll go with Dear Friend, and I'll show off some of his other ones. I guess I might as well. I would focus your attention on the Executioner first, but yeah, like I was mentioning in the last episode, with the Power Crisis and low enough HP on Faye, you can one-shot one or both of these guys. Uh, they have between five and 6,000 health each, and yeah, just basically target one and take pre presumably the executioner since she has instant death attack. And she also has an all all elemental spells that she can use against us as well. So I would target that one first. But you really don't have a whole lot to worry in this fight. Um, I would recommend bringing Billy specifically for that reason so he can heal. But um, other than that, I wouldn't really worry all that much. Um, let's show off Flying Arm since I haven't shown it off yet. Emerald's sound effects are not all that interesting yet. So, Executioner, I think that's her final attack as she dies, if I'm not mistaken. Either that or it's the instant death attack. One or the other. Yeah, that's an instant death attack because I don't think that was supposed to do that much damage. And she's not dead. So, yeah. It's one of the reasons why I mentioned having Zeta Sols for this fight. Other than that, yeah, I'm, there's a few cases where I'll use the Power Crisis. I'll probably still use it in random battles just to get through them faster. But, uh, for the most part, I'll probably avoid using it. Now, if you remember from before, Wrath had this attack last time. And he was taking down half the HP of years with it. Now it does 90 damage. I don't know how that happened, but uh, somewhere along the line, it uh, lost a lot of its power. All right, let's use Dark Beast to end uh, the execution here. I don't think she's got that much more HP left. And then I think I'll use Billy to heal himself and Faye to go back on the offensive. You could use Yin power to increase his damage. Um, it's not particularly necessary. Uh, there's no elemental immunities or affinities, as far as I know, with these two. 
basically the only ones I'll be checking for, for the most part, are probably water, dark, and light, because most of my attacks, and maybe fire if I'm using Rico for some reason. Though Rico's kind of reached the end of his usefulness, I probably won't use him much, if at all, through the rest of the game. So, let's go here and use Holy Gate! You'd think this do this would do more damage, uh, being, I think it's Holy Elemental? I could be mistaken. But, uh, yeah, it doesn't seem to do much more than his main attack anyway. Oh yeah, I was gonna heal. Um, uh, well, let's heal with you. 150, good enough. Just enough to survive another attack, unless it's a combo. There we go. And he's got, I guess, Meteor Aim Kick. Ow! Seriously? I never had them do this much damage to me in any of my testing, and I fought these guys twice in testing. Once last week, before I got sick, and uh, then again yesterday, I think? I'm not very good with timelines. Let's use Dark Beast on you again. So the episodes, I, I believe there's enough time in the subsequent scenes to the end of the disc for about three episodes, so they might be slightly shorter than my normal episodes. It just depends on where the good points are to kind of cut the episodes off, because after this boss fight, the remaining bit of the disc and I know this is kind of a, a different approach from lots of other games, is, uh, let's see, let's heal me there so I don't die again. But um, yeah, unlike with lots of other games, at the end we have the boss fight, and then we have nothing but scenes for the rest of the time. Ouch. Um, you take him down. Even with that attack, you can only hit one person at a time with it, so as long as you... Like, ideally, I would have used Speed Up with uh, Goddess's Call, I think it's called, to use the Speed Up ability with Billy, and that would have been pretty much it for this fight, and I wouldn't have had to worry about healing all that much, because everyone would have been going too fast, and we would have been able to easily keep up with the damage. But even as is, I can keep up for the most part. It's not taking too much extra time. You could buff up for this fight, and the last time I attempted it, I did. Um, you, know, you buff up with speed, you buff up with uh, yin power with fey, and yeah. It, it really isn't all that helpful. You get lots of experience. And crappy experience gains. Oh well. I don't really care of this stage in the game. Because, uh, well, we'll get into there a little bit later. However... You have a gear? Oh well, we know he has a gear. I was expecting him to sick them on us, but apparently not. That's our help. I'm not sure what don't means, though I would assume it means hedge your bets, believe in, something to that extent. How come you have all that power? How does the Executioner have so much power? We've only kind of seen her twice in the game, and we have no idea who she is. Make what up to you? Holy crap. Ellie just lost both her parents in the span of about five minutes. That pain is unbearable. You stupid bitch. Now, I believe Krellian was mentioning something about uh, her being able to awaken or something like that, but what are you talking about? 
Apparently the Executioner still has more, and all of our characters are suffering. Except Faye? Oh, he's kinda sorta suffering a little bit? But not a lot. Oh, not this again. Keep sleeping. Who's sleeping? Oh, that's a strange flashback to have. In the hangar. Why would a gear be moving by itself? That doesn't make any sense. Oh fuck, that's it, gear. Um... Game? Exactly what's going on here? I know it's kind of apparent to some people. I'm going to shut up. <laughs> because this is one of the awesome revelations of the end of this one. And he just kind of breaks through the barrier. No effort at all. And here is the battle against Ramses. Oh, sure. You you'll do fine against Id. I don't know how Id's gear is in phase here. Oh, who am I kidding? I know exactly what's going on. <laughs> now, this is jumping a forward in the timeline here. This is cutting out a bunch of stuff that they'll flash back to in the next episode. But, um, yeah. Graf, we've already seen Graf in the same room as Krellian. So we obviously know that Graf is not Krellian in disguise or anything like that. But we don't know who the Executioner is. Oh. And we do now. Yes, all along Miang, which, uh, you know, actually does make a whole bunch of sense considering we know that she's worked with uh, Graf in the past. She was Graf's representative when talking to the Kaiser in executioner form before, issuing commands to bring Faye to D block, which was the uh, kind of the important bit that she did there. But it also shows that. Um, because she's also part of Solaris, that Solaris and the Gazelle Ministry and everyone else was involved in bringing Faye from where he was after fighting the Dora, or being slaughtered by the Dora, and getting knocked out, and then getting sent over to uh, Kislev in D-Block. The old days. What are you talking about? Oh, but he's only 20 and he only remembers the last three years since he arrived in Lehan or Lahan, whatever. Why would he have mixed feelings? Okay, what about Ramses? Car is left already. Of course he has, because he's kind of a waste of time and keeps being called trash by a lot of people. Then again, he is failing a lot. How can you keep doing that? I guess it's all down to determination, isn't it? You induced him to feel that way? How'd you figure that? Let's take good care of him. I'm not sure who they're referring to. I'm not sure who they're referring to there. I... Yeah, I'll, I'll just shut up. Never mind. We should do a favor for Carr, shouldn't we? But that's probably the best point I have to cut off an episode. So that's all for this one, and I'll see you guys next time.